Okay, I'm experimenting from home here to see if I can record a couple slides um, and to go over some uh, cases for speech audiometry presentation level selection and speech audiometry masking selection. So these two cases are actually from the uh, one of the articles that I posted up on uh, Blackboard for you, Clinical Masking and Speech Audiometry, a Simplified Approach. And while I did take these two cases from that particular place, um, these I, I did not use their methods of selecting presentation levels and masking necessarily. So while the audiograms are the same, they may not uh, be the exact same numbers that are used here. So just kind of as FYI in case you've either looked at that paper or wonder why they don't match up. So we're going to use the methods that we talked about for selection of word recognition presentation level and uh, word recognition uh, masker levels. So the first case here, what we have is it looks like we've got a um, about a mild flat uh, sensory neural loss in the left ear, and we've got a moderate flat uh, sensory neural loss in the right ear. We're already given our uh, SRTs, uh, and they match up quite nicely with the pure tone averages. So 50 versus 52 in the right ear and 35 versus 35 in the left ear. So that indicates good uh, inner test reliability, or essentially uh, that cross-check principle has been uh, validated, I suppose. So the first thing we want to do is check, do we need a mask for SRT? So that's going to be a, a reasonable check. Do we need a mask for SRT? And so let's go ahead and check to see if we need a mask uh, for SRT. And there are two formulae we utilize to see if we need a mask for SRT. So let me go ahead and just show you those two formula as a reminder. So let me pull this onto the screen here. So we can see doing the mask for SRT. The first formula we look at is SRT in the test ear minus best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear. Is that greater than intraoral attenuation? Let's go ahead and figure that out. So let's start with the right ear is our test ear. So we can see the SRT in our right ear is 50. And we're gonna go put some spacing in here so you can see that better. 50 minus the best bone conduction threshold in the in the in the non-test ear. So the non-test ear here is the left ear. Best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear appears to be about 30 or so. So we're gonna minus 30, and that's going to give us uh, 20. So um, is 20 greater than? Our interval attenuation is greater than or equal to 40, right? And so the answer is going to be no. I'm just going to use 40 as interval attenuation level for our super orals, and we're just going to pretend that we're using super orals for both of these. Is it greater than or equal to 40? And the answer, of course, is no. So we do not need to mask uh, for the SRT in the right ear. We're good on that. Let's go ahead and check for the SRT in the left ear here based on. Or actually, first we'll check with the other rule. SRT in the test ear, which is 50, minus SRT in the non-test ear, which is 35, and um, that equals 15. And is, is 15 greater than or equal to uh, 40? And the answer is, of course, no, it is not. So we do not need a mask for SRT for the right ear. So let's go ahead and plug in these same values for the left ear, and we'll see if we need a mask there now. So SRT in the left ear is 35, right? And our best bone conduction threshold in the um, right ear, which is our non-test ear, appears to be around, I would say, 45 or so. That gives us negative 10 is gonna be our uh, difference there. So is negative 10, is that, greater than or equal to uh, 40 and of course the answer there is no and we just flip around these two numbers so our test year now is 35 for the srt non-test year is 50 for the srt the difference is negative 15 is negative 15 greater than or equal to 40 of course the answer is no so no we do not need to mask for SRT in either ear. Okay, so let's look at word recognition. So before we figure out 
word recognition masking, let's figure out word recognition presentation levels. So how do we figure out word recognition presentation levels? Let me go to my right spot here. Oh, hang on there one second. I think I need to make a little tweak here to the window. Let's see if I can uh, adjust my window. There we go. So keep that on all screens here. Available, always on invisible workspace. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom up there, and let's go ahead and see. Do we need to? Do we need to go ahead and let's? How, how do we figure out our presentation levels? So let's uh, go down here a little bit, skip down some spaces, and so let's start with our right ear. We'll start with the right ear on top. So for the right ear. It's a sensory neural loss. Remember, we want to probably use our 2000 Hertz rule. We have our 2000 Hertz threshold for our right ear, 2000 Hertz threshold in right ear. That equals 50 dB, as far as what I can tell. So 50 dB HL. And based on our 2000 Hertz rule, if it's 50 dB, we add 20 dB. SL. So 50 plus 20 equals 70 dBHL. That's going to be our word recognition presentation level for the right ear. Let's see if I've got that down here. Um, oh, actually on my phone, I guess, not on that one. Let's see if I can touch that and get a thumb on the head and work. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, one ahead. I kind of didn't mean to skip ahead there. 70 dB in our right ear is our presentation level. So let's try to figure out the same thing for our uh, left ear. Let me see, if I make that a little bigger. There we go. Let's try to figure out the same thing for our other ear. Let's make sure I've got that available on all, always on top. There we go. So for our uh, left ear, our 2000 Hertz threshold in the left ear is going to be 2000 Hertz threshold in the left ear equals. It looks like, oh, let me move my window out of the way. 2000 Hertz threshold is 35 dBHL. 35 dBHL. And if you remember, if our, it's 35 dBHL, that means it's less than 50, which means we add 25 dBSL is what we're going to do. So let's go down here. We add the 25 dBSL based on that. Um, 2000 Hertz rule, so we have 35 plus 25, and that equals 60 dBHL, and boom, 60 dBHL is our presentation level for the left ear, okay? The question is, do we need a mask? Do we need a mask for these? So our rule to figure out if we need a mask, let me get over to my right spot here. Here's our rule to figure out if we need a mask for word recognition. Let me uh, copy my formula. and I'm gonna paste it down for you here. There is our uh, formula to see if we need a mask. So let's start with the right ear. And for the right ear, our presentation level is 70. And that's the presentation level in the test ear minus the best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear. So left ear is our non-test ear. From what I can tell, it looks like to be about 30. So 70 minus 30 equals 40. Um, and is that greater than or equal to the inoral attenuation? So the answer to that is, of course, yes, it's not greater than, but it is equal to the inoral attenuation. So yes we need to mask. So since we need to mask when we're testing word recognition on the right ear, we need to figure out how much do we need to mask. And so for that next one, here is our rule. How much do we need to mask? Here is our formula. That's how much we need to mask. So let's plug and play here. And our masking level is gonna be equal to our presentation level at 70. And the test ear minus interval attenuation plus largest ear bone gap in the non-test ear. So left ear is our non-test ear, largest ear bone gap. I mean, it's pretty much zero. We can either use zero or we can use five. It doesn't much matter, really. And let me make sure my, my audio is still coming through here. 
I heard a beep there. I want to make sure my, yeah, my audio is still coming through. I'm not sure what that beep was from. So we can use either five or we can use zero. I'm just going to use five just, just because, really. Uh, because you can see if we look at 2,000 hertz in our contest here on our left ear, there's a 5 dB earbud gap. It's not meaningful, so you could do zero if you want, but I'm just going to use five. That's all. So I've got my 5 dB earbud gap, and I've got my 20 dB safety factor. So if we plug that all through there, 70 minus 40 is 30, plus 5 is 35, plus 20 is 55 dB. So 55 dB is my masker. But now here's the next step that I've kind of talked about before, but I haven't really emphasized its importance. Um, we want to check to see if we're overmasking. And I know this is kind of where I've lost you before. So if we want to see if we want to overmask, now this is where I've I've added. I've added this part to the sheet that I've uploaded on Blackboard. If you haven't seen that, download that. If you want to see if we're overmasking, here's our formula we use to see if we're overmasking. So we have our effective masking level in the non-test here, which is 55. We're going to minus our interoral attenuation of 40. That gives us 15. So the question here is, is 15 greater than the best bone conduction threshold in the test year? Test year, because now we're comparing the masker level in the non-test year. To the bone conduction threshold in the test ear because we want to see is that noise so great that it crosses over and becomes audible to the test ear. So the best bone conduction threshold in the test ear, test ear being the right ear in this scenario, is from roll 45. So 15, is it greater than 45? No, 15 is not greater than 45. So that means we don't have any masker that we are using in the, we don't have, um, I'm sorry, we have mask, we don't have any overmasking. So 55 is the level that we are indeed using. You can see that I've added 55 dB of masker to the left ear while we test super, super threshold word recognition in the right ear. So now, if you follow me so far, let's go ahead and check out the opposite ear. So the first thing we want to ask ourselves is, uh, do we need to apply masking when we're testing the left ear? And remember, if we want to ask ourselves, do we need to apply masking, um, then let's go ahead and figure out if we need to apply masking here. So let's go ahead and just copy this formula here, go down, and we're just gonna we're just gonna put in the right values here. There's our formula, presentation level minus in the test ear minus, uh, which is gonna become 60 minus the best uh this is just from the other ear best bone conduction threshold in the non in the non-test ear remember our non-test ear is now the right ear best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear appears to be 30. i mean 60 minus 30 is 30. is 30 greater than or equal to 40 of course it's not so no we don't need to apply any masking uh when in, in the non-test ear in the uh right ear when we're testing word recognition in the left ear. So that's case one. Oh no, I take it back. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's done. We're case one, case one, case closed. So we've got 70 dB is our word recognition presentation level in the right ear. We've got to apply a 55 dB of mask in the left ear. And then when we test the left ear, 60 dB is what we're applying in the left ear. And we don't need any masker in the right ear because there's no risk of cross hearing. All right. So now let's move on to case two. So case two, let's go. There we go, now we're on case two here, all right? So case two, the first thing we wanna see is, do we need a mask for SRT? So let me just grab my SRT formula here and we're gonna pull that down. I'm just gonna copy and paste for a moment. So don't really worry too much about the numbers that I've got going on here. So the first thing is, Let's go ahead and pretend that our right ear is our test ear. And so for our right ear, let's go ahead and plug in our SRT of zero and our best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear, which is the left ear. I'm seeing it's also zero from what I can tell. All right, so zero minus zero equals, of course, zero. So is zero greater than or equal to 40? No, it's not. So we don't need to mask when we are uh, at least by this rule, when we're for the first of the two rules, when we're testing the right ear. Let's look at the other other rule SRT in the test ear. 
which is of course zero. Um, and we want a minus SRT in the non-test year, which is 30. Zero minus 30 is of course negative 30. So is negative 30 greater than or equal to 40? No, it's not. So we don't need to mask uh, for SRT in the right year, but how about SRT in the left year? Do we need to mask for SRT in the left year? And let's go ahead and paste my formula down here. So for the left year, let's start by looking at our SRT in the left year, which is 30, right? 30 is our SRT in the left year. We're gonna minus the best bone conduction threshold in the non-test year. So best bone conduction threshold in the right year appears to be zero. 30 minus zero is 30. So is 30 greater than or equal to 40? No, it's not. And the other comparison we make in order to decide, do we need a mask for SRT in the left ear? We're gonna take our SRT in the left ear 30, and we're gonna minus SRT in the right ear on non-test ear zero. That gives us an even 30. So is 30 greater than or equal to 40? No, of course it's not. So again, no, we do not need a mask for SRT in either of the ears. And so now we move on to word recognition testing, of course. So I'm just gonna copy and paste my formula again. So for word recognition testing, we want to say, uh, well, I guess the first thing we want to do is figure out what are our presentation levels for word recognition testing. So for word recognition testing, our first presentation level we're trying to figure out um, is the right ear. So right ear, is that a hearing loss? Is that normal hearing, conductive loss? What's going on? I think that's normal hearing. So because that's normal hearing, we're going to use our rule SRT plus 40. So let's see what's going on there with SRT plus 40. That means 40 dB is our presentation level. How about the left ear? The left ear, do we have a hearing loss? We do have a hearing loss there, but is it, a, is it sensory neural or conductive? Well, it's conductive there. So that means we use that same rule, SRT plus 40. SRT here is 30 dB at 40, and we have 70 dB. 70 dB, you can see, is faded in there in the, in the lower right. So 70 dB is our presentation level for word rec. So now, now we ask, do we need a mask? So let's go up here and determine if we need a mask or not. So let me find my formula where it kind of disappeared here. Um, if we, so we want to say, do we need to mask? Um, here we go. All right, so let's get our formula here. And move it on down the bottom. So we're going to start with, we're going to start with the right ear because it's on top presentation level we've selected for the right ear is 40 and that's uh, minus the best bone conduction threshold in the non-test ear so our non-test ears our left ear you notice our bone conduction thresholds in our in our left ear are, are pretty normal right so our best bone conduction threshold in the left ear which is the masked bone conduction threshold is five no no zero zero at 2000 hertz so zero and so 40 minus zero is that greater than or equal to, is that greater than or equal to 40? And 40 minus zero equals 40, greater than or equal to 40, and yes, it is. So we do need a mask. So here, first question is, how much do we need a mask? So let's see how much we need a mask. Let me grab my masking formula up here, this easy one here. We've got our formula. Let's copy that down here for us. And at the bottom, there's our formula for how much we need to mask. Again, we're presenting 40 in the right ear. And that may seem surprising that we have to mask, but it is equal to inoral attenuation. So it's very, very much borderline, but we do need to mask. So let's start out with our Studebaker rule. So effective masking level equals presentation level in the test ear minus interoral attenuation of 40. Um, plus largest air bone gap in the non-test ear. So non-test ear is the left ear, not the non-test ear. It has an air bone gap, right? The largest air bone gap to me appears to be 35 dB. That's what I'm seeing about a thousand hertz. So let's add that. And we've got our 20 dB safety factor, okay? 20 dB safety factor. So if I take 40 minus 40, that's zero plus 35 is 35 plus 20 is 55. 
So 55 is the masker level based on the Studebaker rule. But, but, but that's not going to, it's not going to fly quite yet because now what I need you to do is figure out if you're over masking. And so in order to do that, we're going to apply that over masking rule that I showed you before. So here is our over masking rule. Let me give me a moment to kind of copy and paste it from above here. Um, we find that over masking rule. There's our formula. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. So we've got it down at the bottom. All right. There we go. If effective masking level minus non test ear and blah, 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 we're over masking. Let's find out if that's true. Effective masking level we picked was 55 minus integral attenuation of 40 equals 15. So the question is is 15 greater than the best bone conduction threshold in the test ear? Remember, when we talk about overmasking, we're always referencing best bone conduction threshold in the test ear. So what is the best bone conduction threshold in the test ear? It appears to be 0 dB. So 15 is greater than 0. So we're overmasking. What's going on? So what do we do now? And so if you remember right, what I said before, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste this over for you because you may not have that sheet in front of you. So if we are um, over masking, then what you wanna do is reduce the safety factor of 20 dB down to as low as you need to go so that you're not over masking, right? Zero is the lowest, of course, but reduce that. You don't, you don't wanna do anything lower than that because essentially that, uh, presentation level in the, I'm sorry, essentially uh, the formula, the Studebaker formula, where you have presentation level of the test ear minus interval attenuation plus large steer bone gap in the non test ear, that's your minimum masking level. And so if we have 20 dB added in the safety factor and if it causes over masking, that's our window that we can adjust, that 20 dB optional safety factor, that's what we can adjust. But we cannot go anything below that. We can't do negative five or anything like that. Zero is the lowest we go. So how, much, how low do we need to go? Well, I would say let's drop that safety factor altogether. So let's, let's minus 20 dB off that 55 that we picked. 35 minus 40 equals negative five. And that is not greater than zero. So because it's not greater than zero, we are not over masking. So my masker level I picked was 35. You can see that right there. Okay. That was a bit of a tricky one, but I hope you're able to follow, follow with me on that one. So now let's move over to the left ear. So for the left ear, let's go ahead and see what's going on. So for the left ear, let me find my formula as far as do we need a mask? Do we need a mask? Let me find it up here. Actually, no, I'm just going to type it out again. I'm just going to type it out again for you. So let's see if we need a mask. Do we need a mask at all? So if you remember, what we need to figure out is if we need a mask, we're gonna look at um, presentation level. Let's go ahead and just type it out here. We want presentation level um, and the test ear minus best, best bone conduction threshold and non-test ear. Um, is that, well, I better, I can need to do that greater than or equal to symbol. So I'll just copy that there. Okay. Is it greater than or equal to interval attenuation, right? Presentation level, we've got a 70 minus best bone conduction threshold in the non test ear because our test ear is the left ear, our non test ear is the right ear. Best bone conduction threshold is zero. And 70 minus zero. Is that greater than um, is that greater than 40? Of course it's greater than 40. So 70, of course 70 is greater than 40. So we need a mask. So now how much masking do we need to apply? So here's our Studebaker formula. Let's see how much masking we need to apply now. There's our formula. So 70 is our uh, uh, oh sorry. Um, presentation level, we have the 70. 70 minus interval attenuation of 40 and minus, plus the largest air bone gap in the non test ear. Lost me there for a minute. The right ear is the non test ear. Largest air bone gap is zero. 
zero, I believe. Yeah. And then we're going to add our 20 dB safety factor by default. And that gives us 70 minus 40 is 30, plus zero plus 20 is 50. So the question is, is 50 dB of masking good or is it over masking? So let's go back and look at our formula. Let me paste that formula. Let me copy that up top again here. And let me go down a little low, a little low. And effective masking level in the non testee or minus IA, blah, blah, blah. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Okay. Effective masking level is 50, minus interoral attenuation is 40, and that equals 10. So is 10 greater than the best bone conduction threshold in the test ear because our test ear is our test ear is the left ear that means our best bone conduction threshold in the left ear is zero so is 10 greater than zero indeed it is yes that means we are over masking so if we are over masking with a 50 dB stimulus that means we need to drop it down such that we're not over masking. So I'm going to say, so 20 dB was our, win, you know, our, our variable that we can adjust a bit. So we would need to drop it down 15 dB in order for us to no longer be over masking. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's drop it from 50 down to 35. 35 minus 40 equals negative 5. And is negative five greater than zero? No, it is not greater than zero. So no, we are not over masking. All right, I think that answers all of the questions you'd need to ask yourself in order to figure out whether or not you need, how to select presentation level, whether or not you need a mask for SRT, whether or not you need a mask for word recognition, how to determine the presentation level for the masker, and finally, how to determine whether or not you're over masking. So I'm going to go ahead and end that here. Just go ahead and shoot me an email if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.